Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy, and in this video, we will continue the second step that is the derivation of the element level equation in the finite element method. In the last video, we end up our talk on this versatile differential equation uh, that is a general one. I have not specified a C and F here, and the domain is from 0 to L, that is a certain length, and we have two boundary conditions. Actually, in this second step, we will apply Reed's method, uh, also known as uh, the weak form, on each element, because for each element, we will going to derive an equation. And for this, uh, at this we will treating at each element, so we will solve at each element by the Reed's method. That is, firstly, we will have to figure out what is the residual, and then applying the weighted integral statement, and then perform the integration by parts to transfer the differential operator. Uh, actually to distribute the differential differentiality equally so that we get uh, the symmetric, the stiffness matrix that is represented by K. We're going to find the residual of this differential equation. We know the definition of residual, left hand side minus right hand side. The residual from this general differential equation would be exactly same because there is nothing on this right hand side. So this whole is a residual, right? So this is the residual itself. The second, the second part is to put the residual in the, in the weighted residual statement. So we will write, because the weighted residual statement is omega residual time dx over the domain. So the domain is from x0 to x1 for the first element, right? Because this is for each element. We can write, we will going to write this weighted integral statement for every element because we are going to do the derivation of element level equation so that is why on each element we have to write this to write this weighted integral statement this residual residual this r so we can write this is r right and this so we know the domain we know the scale x0 to x1 on each element right we know that this is our residual we have to integrate over the domain of this, but what is not known is w. That is the shape function, and we will going to derive this w for each element. So if I'm going to write it generally, instead of x0 to x1, I will write it xa to xb, where a is the domain of every element. Note a actually, from a to b is the domain of every element. And a and b can vary, because we have not a single element, but n elements in this case in our mesh so let's plug the value of r here so here we are with the weighted integral statement with the domain of every element with this shape function the residual that the residual that is equal to zero because we know the second step in the weak form that is doing the integration by parts so we will going to do the integration by parts here and so this would be the first element and from these two things, we don't need to apply integration by parts. Know that how we can uh, do the integration by parts. This is the thing that eventually be integrated. And these two things that will not be affected by the integration by parts because there's, there's no differential of the displacement here, not here as well. So the outcome will be in the form this. So we are here because this differential operator is now distributed equally on W and U. These two things are here and we have a thing that is under the limit of A to B. So this is here just to recall how we have done the integration by parts and using the residual and the weighted integral statement in order to solve or approximate the differential equation. And we will use this uh, in the upcoming process. Now back to the thing that we have uh, in weighted integral statement here that W is unknown and we have to find a way to figure out what would be the shape function. So we know the approximated function that we will be using in the finite element method that is of the form that U is equal to summation of UJs and psi J. That is the summation, summation of UJ and the shape function and he is representing the superscript E is for element level equation because we will going to derive an equation for each element. That is why the E is here as a superscript. 
so if we're going to expand this one we will be getting this thing and here we need to specify how many nodes are going to take because E is representing here the element number and the subscript U1 and U2 and Psi1 and Psi2 are actually representing the local nodes number in a particular element that is E. For example, we have an element like this with 1, 2 and 3 nodes, but this is the element 1 and this is the element 2. So if in this, in this area, this 2 is, this 1 and 2 are the local node elements but in this e2 this 2 is actually 1 in the local node numbering and 3 is the 2 in the local node numbering that is why there is a need to see the difference in the local node numbering and the global node numbering in global node numbering we have 1 2 and 3 in the local node we have 1 2 and 1 2 in the case we have only two nodes per element so let's derive this only for the two nodes let's suppose we have a linear thing like that only two nodes per element so we will be having this so we're going to derive psi1 and psi2 for a particular element because this is linear we can write generally the shape function the weight function as so the shape function are linear because we are taking two nodes per element so this is the general way of writing the structure of the shape form that is linear a plus bx and c plus jx where a b c d are need to be found yet again in in the previous videos we have talked about the nature of function the shape function is interpolating function because what does that mean? At 1, the psi 1, that is the shape function, will be at its maximum position. For example, it is 1 at this time. And at, at the second node, psi 1 at the second node would be at the minimum position, that is 0. So this is psi 1. And psi 2 at w2. So w2 at 1 would be at the minimum position, but at 2, psi2 2 at 2 at its original position would be at the maximum value, that is 1, let's suppose, in that case. So this would be the behavior of an interpolating function. So if we plug this information in this, right, let's suppose that x is equal to xa, that is this point, first node of the, that is the first local node, and we put this here x a is equal to u1 right this is and psi1 e plus u2 and psi2 at x a so at x a psi1 would be equal to 1 and psi2 would be equal to 0 so if this is 0 which means that this whole thing is equal to 0 and we are left out with u1 e here and then for the same reason, if these two things, we will plug, if we put psi1 at xa, this thing will be equal to 1 and psi2 would be equal to 0. So here, for x is equal to xb, that is the other end, psi1 according to its nature, that is interpolating, at psi1 at the second node would be equal to 0 and psi2 at its second node at its second node would be equal to 1. So now we have four equations, psi1, psi2 for xa and psi1 and psi2 for x2. We have four equations and four unknowns. Now it's time to solve this for a, b and c and d to figure out what is psi1 and psi2 in each element level. So we'll start this by solving for psi1. We're going to write both of equations psi1 that is a plus bx is equal to 1 when x is equal to xa and a plus bx is equal to 0 when x is equal to xb so this is a plus bx from xa and we're going to write a plus bx is equal to 0 for the xb because for each element we have to find every shape function so a plus bx a is equal to 1 and a plus bx b is equal to 0 we will going to write in a matrix form Right, so for A1, we know all how to how we can convert this in the matrix form A plus, uh, it, it would be like AX is equal to B, right? So A is the coefficient vector, so this would be XA and XB, and then X is the vector that is A and B in our case that we need to find, and then B, that is 1 and 0. In order to find the value of A and B, we know we can take the inverse of this vector, right? So this is the square vector. Uh, fortunately, we can 
uh, this is an easy this is an easy task to take the inverse of this vector so so this would be taking the inverse so this is the two cross two vector what we will be doing we'll taking the adjoint uh, what would be adjoint means that we will going to swap these values one in place of xb and xb in place of one and we will multiply this xa and one with the minus one sign and divide it by the determinant and determinant is cross multiplication so xb minus xa so xb minus x is the determinant the cross multiplication so this is it so this is the adjoint i have swapped the values from this diagonal and i have multiplied this xa and one with minus one and this is the determinant that this divided by the determinant so that is why one by xb minus xa now we will going to multiply it and see we're going to multiply it with this that this multiply by one plus this multiply by zero and after doing this we will end up with xb and minus one with the determinant here which implies that here a is equal a is equal to this xb divided by xb minus xa and this b is equal to minus one times divided by xb minus xa we can also say that one divided by xa minus xb both way this is this would be right so now we have a and b we will come back here at psi one and we will plug values of a and b in psi one to get what is the structure of psi one general psi one because general psi one a a plus b x we have to plug value of a and b to find the general psi one so we're going to plug the value of uh, a first x b by x b minus x a and for b b x multiply by this thing so minus x by x b minus x a now we have to take the lcm and it would be x b minus x and x b minus x a so that is actual psi one for each element and this is the general standard procedure for finding what is the actual shear function at each level on the same note we can find psi two finding the values of a and b i am going to write the final psi two value here so this is your task to do the same derivation to for the psi two and compare your answer verify your answer with the psi two that i'm going to write so this is here x minus x a over x b minus x a so these two both are the element level shape functions uh, and these are these are the general shape function which means that this shape function is for each and every element in the mesh that we are dealing with that we have different and unique shape function for each every for each element by changing the domain a and b in each case so if we plug these two values psi one and psi two in this equation we will end up with this uh, equation this approximating equation with u1 element level u1 this is also an element level u2 an element level i haven't write i haven't put the superscript here this would be a superscript again so so we have seen how we can derive a specific unique shape function in our finite element method and this is how we will be approximating a differential equation in the next video we will be continuing from the third step and this is for now thank you for watching these videos and you can subscribe this channel to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye